It was a normal day whenever whenever I woke up on the farm with the smells of cow, cow manure and chicken coops throughout the farm. As I walked out of the house in my blue plaid overalls, red flannel shirt under the overalls, work boots, and a cowboy hat to keep the sun out of my eyes while I started to feed the animals. It was year 2025, and I wondered how this year would go. It's normal with no amazing events or something out of the ordinary might happen. Because in my time, I have learned that nothing remains calm for long. As I was feeding the animals, I occasionally just stared at the city and wondered what, li what life would be like if I had life with all them city folk over there. But then I just go back to feeding the animals and going on my regular day. Whenever it was time for me to mow the yard, I saw that there wasn't any gas in my lawnmower. So I went to the shed to get some, but I saw that I was out of gas. I decided to go into town and go and go to the gas station and fill up my gas tanks. I got into my truck and drove into town and scanned the streets for a gas station. It took about five minutes before I found one, because the streets were littered, were littered with expensive cars that people waste their money on. When the containers were full, I drove back to the farm, only to find out my, that there was a fire inside of my house. I was very shocked, but I snapped out of it and called the fire department to put it out. While they were driving here, I, I was splashing buckets of water onto the fire to keep it from spreading to the rest of the farm. When the fire, when the fire department got here, I backed away and let them handle, handle it. While I watched, I noticed that there was a note attached to the front of the barn. I walked over to it and started to read it. The note said that I should go away and never come back, or if I do, that, that the consequences will be unmerciful and painful. I was worried from the note and wondered if I should, and wondered if I should listen to it. But I think it is madness because it was it was probably teenagers acting like hooligans once again, like always. When the firefighters were done, I thanked them and they drove back off. Then they drove off back to the station. <clears throat> I walked into the house to see, to see all the damage that that was caused to my beautiful home that I have owned for more than twenty years. I have lived inside this house since I was a, since I was a little boy, and now all the memories of joy and fun are gone. It's all just ash and dust, and that is when it happened. I heard the noise of a plane zooming through the sky, and I went out to look at it. But to my surprise, I saw people parachuting out of it. I didn't think it was out of the ordinary, but then the people pulled out guns and started shooting. I ran into the house and locked the door behind me as I ran and called the police for my phone. But the woman who answered said that all lights were full and I had to call back later. <clears throat> That's when I brought, brought the action in my hands. I ran into my closet and pressed a button to reveal a wall of weapons out of the back of the room. I picked up some of the I picked up some weapons and gathered lots of ammunition because I knew that the terrorists won't give up easily. Then I went to, into the garage and pressed another button to reveal an armored jeep that would suit my needs. I climbed inside and ran to the city, ready for combat, and I promised myself that this would be my last fight. I drove into town and started to drive through the streets that were littered with dead bodies and bullet shells, but that didn't stop me from getting to the town hall and setting up on the roof. Because I have seen worse things than this in the military. I set up my station on the roof of the city hall because it has the best view over the city than any other building in this dreaded city. Once I set up, I brought out my sniper rifle and started to, started to watch over the town, sniping anyone who looked like a terrorist. While I was looking down the street, I saw a man in a suit in an alley. It took me a while before I remembered who he was. His name was Jerry Podge and he served in the exact same unit as me when, he, when we went to Russia to stop the nuclear missile program. When he, he was defending what seemed to look like his family, which, which is whenever I saw a man that was about to snipe him from above. I quickly looked up, I quickly scoped him in and pulled the trigger. And he, and Jerry looked at me and nodded. I decided to provide cover fire for him as he was making his way to the outskirts of the city to kill the leader of the terrorist group, because the last we saw, because the last we saw him, was when he was escorted to the outskirts of the city and put in an 
but in an armored building. When he reached the outside of the city, I didn't see him for about 20 minutes until I saw him come out, and his suit was completely clean. And he called me on a cell phone, and all he said was, it's done. His voice was so dark, he must have seen something very horrific happen. When everyone went outside and realized that the threat was over, they cheered because they realized that the threat was gone. The president went to the city and called a meeting in town hall and gave us two medals of honor and courage for our bravery. And he said that he would both gift us one desire that we wanted. Uh, Jerry said that he wanted to have tons of nice suits in a luxury bath so he could smell like a bouquet of roses again. Everyone laughed at what he said. Then, when he asked me what I wanted, I just said that I wanted a quiet life on my farm and enough supplies for years to come. And he said they would do just that. From that day on, I had a good life on my farm. I hadn't been, I haven't been interrupted by teenagers, and I had, and I had a good life for the rest of my days in peace.